So uh, my name's Russ Wiley. The spelling lesson will be a lot shorter than Dave's. Uh, <laughs> it's not Willie, it's Wiley. Other than that, that's it. Um, the good news is I only have six slides. Uh, the bad news is they're in three font, and we're going to read them word for word. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so after those first two uh, presentations, I don't know if they plugged me into the right console, but uh, I'm going to talk about... <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about UAVs and how they're being used in animal and uh, agriculture right now. So um, <clears throat> really one of the cool things they're using it for is to enumerate, tally, and compare. So a lot of people talk about uh, feed yards and stockyards and things like that. One of the things we focus on is open range. How do we manage animals out on the open range, whether that's cattle, sheep, goats, whatever. Um, so what we're using drones for now is uh, you know, we read footage of any kind and count anything, and you can program it to count. So I can literally fly over a field and say, okay, you had 400 head of cattle, we saw three coyotes, and four teenagers in a pickup truck. So we can actually tell you that. <laughs> um, they can be learned, they can be trained to, to learn and detect any object. So like I said, animals, cars, trees. Um, the, right now we have a library of over 2,000 things that we can detect. So I can tell the difference between a cow and a bison. So that makes a big difference out where I'm from. Uh, in New Mexico, there's a lot of uh, Native American tribes, lots of bison. They also have cattle out there and then mixes. So. Um, it integrates with drone technology. So what I'm talking about right now is software, AI, right? Uh, I mean, it's coming. Technology's coming to the industry. It's here, but it's, 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 it's getting even bigger. The enumeration process is accurate to more than 99%. So if we go over a, a, a field that has 10,000, I can get you within 10 on the count. Sometimes shadows and things make, make a difference. Um, this is one of the smaller uh, drones that we use, and I'll go over some of the, the, the uses just to, here in a minute. But the, the, the possibilities are infinite. This is a different drone that we use. This one was developed more for the vegetation um, industry. But what we used to have to take hundreds or dozens or hundreds of man hours, now we can do in a fraction of the time. I can cover a 400-acre area in 45 minutes and tell you everything that was in it. It's a bit, that, that's huge. Ground-based visibility issues are inconsequential. So if we have hills in the way, we have wooded areas and things like that from above, that makes no difference. Um, difficult terrain is now accessible. So we talked to a lot of ranchers. They're using ATVs and horseback and even then having a hard time getting into some of these areas, right? Now I can just fly right over it. Um, thousands of acres can be uh, numbered in a fraction of the time. Uh, human error is eliminated. They did a study where we were looking at wild ducks out on a lake, and the human counters were out there. And, of course, we were getting all kinds of different numbers from the human counters. When we flew over it with a drone, we, uh, we missed two ducks. And we think that's because they dove, but we couldn't prove it. <laughs> um, we can compare da data sets across any period of time. So we could look at last week, last month, last year, what the numbers were, and compare those in real time. Um, it's infinitely scalable. It doesn't matter the amount we have to do. We can always add more drones, whatever, so the land doesn't really, really matter. So how are you using them today? This is the drone he was talking about. We had it at the uh, National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's got a 14-foot wingspan, and it uh, runs on solar power. If you look at those wings, you can see that. It does require a launcher, which we didn't have at the show, but uh, that's one of our biggest drones, and, and uh, we use a lot in the federal space. So um, how we see them used today, health monitoring probably applies, right? So uh, there's some tags out there. They send back a lot of health information. Now I can fly over those in the field rather than a stockyard and draw that information out, and we get real time. Um, range management, they're using them right now to, I was really surprised in New Orleans, they were talking about some of these guys are using them to herd cattle. <laughs> they're actually chasing them with drones around and, and getting them where they need them to go. But water lines, fence lines, this can go out. We can go out and look at it. I didn't really think about water lines, but again, in New Orleans, somebody said, can you monitor my water lines and look for leaks? Because I have a pond, and if I have one of the water lines leaking, then it doesn't have water, and, and I lose cattle. And I said, well, 
yeah, we could do that, but you know, how hard is that to monitor? And he had 225 miles of water line. So uh, it really became a big thing for us to be able to put waypoints out, fly a drone. He never even has to look at it. He can come back and notice any footage difference um, using thermal technology. They're also doing pesticide spraying over, over lots right now. So um, we have several different types of drones that can do that. One of the drones carries a big tub and it, and it sprays and then you have to come back and fill it. Or you can actually just run lines to them and as long as they have a supply, they can fly and, and, and do that kind of thing. They're doing the same thing with herbicides out in areas where they're trying to kill off vegetation. They can use those. And then uh, they're even using them for controlled burning. So they have them out there. They call them the ping pong ball launcher because it drops these little things that look like ping pong balls and they're incendiary devices and they actually start fires for backburns. So um, if you can think, wow, that would be cool if we could do it with a drone, you can. So, um, and then we talk about how it looks in the future. Medication administration, they're actually pra practicing this out in uh, Africa right now with the uh, large rhinos, elephants, and things like that. They're coming in behind them with these silent drones. They have an air gun attached under the wing, and boom, they're hitting them with uh, medication. They have some really crazy um, devices that they use, so the needle will actually fall out of the animal, and then it's made out of some substance that as the sun bakes it, within a couple days it becomes brittle, falls apart and it's gone, so you don't have to worry about needles being all over the savannah or anything like that. That's very expensive to do, but as that becomes more and more price sensitive, it's, it, it may be a way to administer medication out in the field. So this is future stuff, not happening right now. Um, remote tagging, using the same type of air device and tagging animals, or even using sprays. They're using uh, types of paint and things like that to, to tag things, so you'll be able to do that um, herd defense, non-lethal. I mean, you can chase off predators and things like that with a drone too. Um, they're, they're actually talking about doing that. The hard part is the management of that, right? Does somebody have to fly that drone or can it fly over a herd, notice a predator and chase that predator and know the difference? So that's why it's a future thing. And then automated uh, stockyard management, actually drones being able to tell which yards need to be moved, opening the gates automatically using electronic measures and moving um, cattle where they need to go. This actually, I'm sure you guys have seen those really cool pictures for the uh, National Geographic where all the birds are swarming over the lake. Those aren't birds. <laughs> those are drones. So they're doing some swarming techniques with them, um, sometimes chasing off uh, birds. We had a conversation about that. Um, also, if we're spraying large areas, if you had swarms like this, they'd be able to spray those areas very, very easily. So there's a lot going on in the, in the industry, and then every day there's something new happening. They have drones that fly with whole cages now, and they can fly into buildings, and when they bump into things, they don't ruin their rotors and stuff like that. So the, uh, if you can think about it, it's probably already happening. If not, it's, it, it's coming. <laughs>